Everybody overcomplicates this so much. When you're first getting into Fusion, it can feel like there's so much stuff you need to learn. And not just Fusion, but even just editing or color grading or whatever it is. It's a universal problem. We think of something that we need to do, that we want to do, and we need to understand something super deeply before we can even jump into it. And so if that's you, I hope that this is helpful. I'm going to be working in the Fusion page of Resolve and playing around with this uh, Star Wars themed footage. You can download that for free which, with that link. I just want you to be able to have stuff to play with and learn Fusion with, okay? So get that, follow along with me, play around all you want. Anytime that you're working on a creative project, there is the ideal, there's the biggest quality thing that would be, you know, best case scenario, absolutely this is the best way to do it, okay? For putting in a TIE Fighter, it's probably a high quality 3D mesh with a perfect render. Okay, perfect lighting, perfect textures. You have all of your settings absolutely dialed in. The very best thing would be if that were all optimized to work natively in Fusion. So you could tweak it afterwards. And I mean, that would be the best, right? So that's the best. That's like on the high end of the scale, right? About the worst you could do would just be to type TIE Fighter on the screen, okay? And the truth is that there is a continuum between these two concepts, between these two uh, levels of quality. And the big issue is that so many of us go for this, and then we realize we can't have this, and then we burn out and quit. This, I'm convinced, is the reason why so many of us don't do creative stuff, is because we have this standard of quality that we just don't have the experience to back up, right? But the truth is you don't need to go to this level to make very realistic, really amazing visual effects. Is that the ideal? Would that be the highest quality and most versatile way to do this kind of thing? Uh, yeah, probably. But most of the time, this level of stuff is way overkill. The truth is that with any visual effect, and this, this also applies to motion graphics and pretty much anything you do in media, but especially with visual effects, there is a threshold where something is good enough. Now, what you might be thinking when I say that is like, wow, that's a kind of a really slacker way to approach this because I don't want to just make things that are good enough because chances are, if I'm making something that's good enough, it's not good enough. And I hear what you're saying. I'm not saying that you should skimp on quality and cut corners and make something that's really crappy because that's not cool. We can't be proud of things that is just not good. But there is a point on this continuum where you put in enough quality and time and something is good enough and it doesn't look that much different than something that took, you know, 10 times the amount of, of time and energy, right? Just because something took twice the time doesn't mean that it's going to be twice the quality. In fact, it almost always diminishes uh, after this good enough point. And so your job as somebody who's making visual media is to figure out this threshold right here, this good enough threshold, because chances are you might be able to actually do something that's just over this good enough line. Now, will it be as high quality as this? Maybe not, but it also might be pretty much indistinguishable from this with a 10th of the effort. <laughs> when we're talking about making a TIE fighter, Yes, it would be best to have a high quality 3D mesh with a perfect 3D render, having it match moved and 3D tracked and all of that stuff. But you know what would work probably just as good? A still. Using a still either rendered from 3D or a picture or something like that is going to be almost as good and it's way less work, way less. Let me show you how we can put a TIE fighter in this that looks great with zero 3D knowledge, with, with zero rendering and lighting knowledge. Here I have a couple of shots of a miniature that we took. Here's a TIE Fighter from the front. I'll just drag this in. And this is just shot on a blue screen. I'll bring this up. And this is literally just a toy perched on a little thing of clay. And this is just a still picture. And check this out. I could put on a Delta Keyer here and key out this blue, just like that. I'll hit A to bring up the alpha, and go over here to matte, push up this threshold so I have a solid black and solid white for my matte. I could do a little bit more work on that, but it's okay for now. And here I have my TIE Fighter cut out. I'll also grab a polygon mask, drag this into my Delta Keyer, click and drag with my right mouse button, 
and then just drop this output on the delta keyer, and I'm going to select garbage mat. So I'm going to connect this polygon to the garbage mat, and I'm just going to garbage mat out this little column here, and turn on my polygon mask. There we go. And look at this. This is just it's terrible. It's terrible. Okay, I did not do a good job. All right, but here's the real deal. We have this TIE Fighter here, and I'll just take this keyed version of the TIE Fighter and bring it over our media in like this. And let's grab a transform, drag that in, and now we can size this and everything. And we can place this over there in the sky. Change our size and everything, whatever we wanna do. And boom, we have a TIE Fighter in the sky. And guess what? This is going to look just as real as taking all of that. I mean, I could spend three hours doing a 3D render and putting this in, and it would look just about the same. Honestly, it would look just about the same. And this took me three minutes, put it in. I could do a whole bunch of work trying to match the 3D lighting for the environment uh, for this 3D render and everything. Or I could just take this merge and take the blend down a little bit. And guess what? Now we have some ambient lighting on this TIE Fighter, and guess what? It looks really good. <laughs> it looks really good. It looks like it's there. And so if we wanted that flying at us, we could do that. And we have a couple other different angles here if we want to do basically the same thing and have it fly at different angles. Let's say we need it to turn, right? We need to actually see some 3D stuff. Well, then we would need to actually get a 3D render, right? Not really, because what you can do is, again, something that's good enough and get the effect done in a really convincing way without having to be a 3D wizard, right? Check this out. We have a picture of the sides of the TIE Fighter like this. I could just run the same Delta Keyer here just to get rid of those. And let's run a garbage mat here and we'll just garbage mat out the sides of this. Okay. So now we have the side of this TIE Fighter just isolated. We can take this and let's jump into some really basic 3D stuff here in Fusion. I'm just gonna grab this image plane 3D right here and just plug this into an image plane 3D. We'll get a 3D merge, put that image plane into the merge and take this merge into a renderer like that. Hit two on the keyboard so we can see our 3D render. Take this merge 3D and put this on the left viewer with by hitting one. And so now all we've done is just taken that still and we've brought it into 3D space. We're just basically taking that 2D image and just floating it in 3D space, okay? Let's take this other image right here, maybe adjust our mask a little bit. I'll just make a new mask and plug it into our polygon and just cut the wings off of this thing. Just do a terrible job. Here we go. So we just have the middle of this. We're gonna plug this into another image plane 3D, just like this, put that into our merge. Let's take this image of our wing here and let's rotate that 90 degrees on the Y axis. And I'm just gonna line this up with the side of our TIE Fighter like this. Just kind of lining that up in 3D. There we go. I'll just take this same one and copy and paste it and drag this same Delta Keyer, this, this same image right into that same image plane. Put that in and move this over like that. That kind of duplicates it like this. And look what we got. Look at this. Look what we got going on here. I'll just make a transform 3D. Look at that. We have a... TIE Fighter, sort of. It looks kind of bad right here, but check this out. We have some 3D parallax. We have a lot of what we're trying to do, and this is just from three images, okay? We have this all set up, and now we can take this renderer 3D, and we can merge that over all of our stuff, and with our transform 3D selected here, we can do some rotation and everything, and we can have a pretty convincing flyby of our TIE Fighter. 
We can have that fly by with parallax and everything. Look at that. That's so sick. And because it's going to be far away and it's going to be blurry, it just doesn't have to be that perfect. We can get away with this stuff without knowing all of that stuff we thought we need to know, right? Again, we'll just take this blend down a little bit just to blend it with the sky. Guess what? Instant atmosphere. You can have that turn. And for the most part, you know, all the way from like about here to here, that looks pretty good. Right there on the sides, we can kind of see that these cards are a little bit too thin. But if we're just off axis a little bit, it's pretty convincing. It looks pretty good, especially if it's going to be moving, right? You don't need something fancy to even have this kind of 3D flexibility right here inside of Fusion. And if we want to put these in the sky and track them, we don't need a full 3D track. You don't need to be amazing at match moving and, you know, figure out where everything is in the 3D space and know all this stuff about your camera. Literally, you can get away with a planar tracker. I'm just gonna type in planar tracker. Select about the middle of our movement here. Select these trees. Hit set and track forward. Go and track backward. And we can run this whole thing through a planar transform. And now we can have this TIE fighter going by. And you see parallax and everything. Now we can have it bank. Here we go. Now we get some awesome animation of this TIE fighter that totally works. And we just don't need to go crazy on it. This is all just animating stuff with a still. Click the link down below to download this footage, play around with it, and remember to keep things simple. You don't need to overcomplicate stuff, all right? All right, there's the, there's the download for the, for the Star Wars stuff. And if you wanna learn Fusion, my name's Casey and I want to teach you. So I hope this is helpful. Okay, bye.